Today I'm going to show you how to change needles in GKMF7923 and what needles to use for the best results. You will need a pair of tweezers, a screwdriver provided with the machine. It's useful to have a bit of fabric, preferably white or white on one side, and a pack of new needles. This machine uses UY128GAS needles. They have an extra long scarf. The scarf is an indentation above the eye that lets the thread be grabbed by the looper or the shuttle hook to form a stitch. Longer scarves help eliminate skipped stitches. Always check your new needles, roll them on the table, see if they are not bent, if the tip is not blunt. Even the new ones can sometimes be faulty. Make it your habit, always check your needles before you change them. Always use the needle system that is right for your machine. The needle system is determined by the diameter of the needle's shank and the needle's length from the top to the eye. As in most industrial sewing machines, these needles have a round shank, not flat at the back as in domestic machines. I can see that my system is right for the machine. It says UY128GAS on the box, on the pack. But you can also see that because they're longer. If you have any other industrial machines, you can compare and the scarf is visibly longer. They are mainly used in chain stitching machines, so cover stitches, interlocks, or chain stitches for jeans. The length of uh, the needle is almost four centimeters, 38.9 millimeters to the eye. I can actually show you the difference between my overlocker needle and this one, so for the cover stitch. They are visibly different. Well, the chunk is two millimeters in each, but in diameter, but they are different in the length. So the cover stitch needle is far longer. And most importantly, the scarf is much longer. So the indentation, the reach on the needle is longer. So you might already know that the indented part should go to the back. But I've had quite a few questions about the indented part because the needles have a slight ridge on both sides, so at the back and the front. But there is a very, very visible indentation, big indentation, and that should go to the back, the big one to the back. How to choose the right needle for your project? This machine sews light to medium weight fabric, so the suitable needle size is from 65 or 9 to 90, 14 UY128 Gasso GAS needles. And you can also see a point symbol, so SPI in this one. That means that it's a slim acute point. It works well with densely woven materials like microfiber or silk or something that is coated thin fabric, something that is smooth like taffeta, pretty much like Microtex needle. I was trying to show you that the point is really sharp, but I don't think you can see it. It's not a fancy camera, so it is a sharp point. SPI means a sharp point. Bigger size SPI can be used for sewing fur or leather, but you will probably most often use SES needles for your cover stitch machine because SES ES needles are used for any sort of jersey or stretch or knit fabric. SES is a light ballpoint needle and the ballpoint pierces the spaces rather than the fibers. And of course it comes in variety of sizes, in all the sizes. And it's perfect for knitwear, for light denim fabric, for densely woven but light weight fabric. But bigger sizes can be used with medium to heavyweight woven fabric or even laminated fabric. But first of all, it's perfect for sportswear. You can also see sometimes that there is nothing, no description, no point description at the pack. So it's just UY128GAS and nothing else. That's the regular point. So it's just like a universal needle for your domestic sewing machine. So the R, or regular round point, is slim conical shape. The point has a slim conical shape and it works well with woven fabric, heavyweight or lightweight woven fabric. It is just a universal needle. It's a good idea to label your needles. When you buy them and you still remember what you bought, 
you can put the point system or what you use the needles for, what size they are, and keep them all together in the same bag or in the same envelope. Different companies can use slightly different names for their point symbols. I mainly use Schmatz, but also Juki or Organ or Grotzbeckert. Try to buy from trusted sources and you will know what you bought. I found a pack of regular ones. They don't have any marking, so they don't have R there as the system point. So I can write it down and I will always know what to use them for. I generally mark what they are best for and uh, that helps. You don't have to think. <laughs> you just grab the needle and put the needle in the machine. Okay, we can change our needles first. Switch the machine off. Like, really, seriously, switch it off. Changing the needles is actually really, really easy. You need the screwdriver. You unscrew all your old needles. You've got three little screws on the clamp, on the needle clamp. You unscrew them or loosen them one by one and remove the needles one by one. I use a piece of cloth with white surface, first of all, to see better. And also it helps me because the needles won't get stuck in the feed dogs or, or disappear somewhere, get lost. When you've removed all the needles, the old needles, you can insert the new ones. Of course, always check if they are not bent, not blunt, that they are absolutely fine, perfect, even if they are new. I've never had problems with any Schmatz needles, but it's good to check. And remember, put the indented part to the back. So this indentation, the proper indentation, not just a tiny little ridge, the indentation goes to the back. You can feel it with your fingers and you can actually see it. So that goes to the back. If you have sweaty fingers, you can always use a cloth to hold the needle as well. Because the next important thing to remember is that the needle needs to go all the way to the top. There can't be any space or you can break your needle. So all the way to the top, into the slot. I'm using tweezers because I want to make sure that everything is inserted properly, that the needle goes to the top. Okay, another one. The indentation to the back. <laughs> And that really is important, so you can double or triple check that your indentation is definitely facing the back. So that goes to the back. Remember that the shank is round. By the way, the top, well, the, the bottom of the needle, the round bottom of the needle, is called a butt. So B-U-T-T. -T. And you can remember that the butt needs to hit the end of the slot. Push it to the very end till the butt you can feel that there is absolutely no space. It is a bit fiddly, especially that I've got the spreader, so the spreader is in my way. But as soon as everything is in the clamp, you can tighten the screws and we can put in the last needle, the third needle. Again, with the reach to the back, definitely to the back, we can double and triple check. And holding the needle firmly, we put it in the slot in the needle clamp to the very end till we feel that we can't push it any further. So there are basically two very important elements in all this process. That the, the scarf needs to go to the back and that the needle needs to be pushed to the very end of the slot. And now we can thread it and we can check if our needles are going to work. And I know that I've spent a lot of time talking about the needles themselves because it's very important, because the needle you use determines whether the machine is going to do the job properly or not. And very often people think that the machine is broken. All they have to do is change the needle, change for another type of a needle, another size of the needle, or simply change the old needle and use a new one. <laughs> I'm going to leave this bit, the threading bit, uh, in the video because I want you to remember that you need to insert the thread into all the slots, into all the guides. So the top guide over your needle clamp and uh, the little holes in the needle clamp itself. And it's quite easy to forget about them. And we might have problems if we forget about them. Not huge problems, but the needles can come unthreaded. The tweezers are really handy when you are threading any industrial sewing machine. But this industrial sewing machine has a lot of elements around the needles. So it really helps to have tweezers. It's almost done and we'll be able to check. I'll just put all 
the threads to the back and I'm going to grab some sample and I'm going to check if the needles, the new needles are working properly. First I'm going to check it without the spreader, so I'm going to have three lines of stitching and the bottom cover and they work fine, they work perfectly. And now I'm going to thread the spreader, so the, the looper on top, it's called the spreader. And uh, I'm going to check if it works with the spreader. It should work with the spreader, I see no reason why it shouldn't. By the way, if you haven't, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. And yes, it works with the spreader. I got some threads caught in the spreader, but it doesn't really matter. Let's do it again, just, just to see that it works properly. You also ask how often to change the needles. Often, more often than you think. So if you love your machine, change them often. So you can change them after three shifts or 24 hours. I found my Brots Beckett system. That's the point system. I know it's in Polish, but the system is the letters on top. So that also helps if you use some other needles, some other brands to translate the needle point system. Though you can just make a note. FFG, Grotz Beckett is the one that you use most often. And RS is SBI, the sharp one. Mm -hmm. 